I'll introduce you. All right, everybody, it's 11 o'clock. It's time to begin the lessons. Welcome everybody to Spelling for Life lessons. Today, I'm Lynn Stone and today we have a special guest in the studio. His name is Marvel. Marvel is Imogen's cat. We have three cats. Imogen has two cats and Marvel is one of hers. We adopted him from Meow Kitten Rescue when he was 10 weeks old. He was found just days old, abandoned, flea bitten with ringworm, a starving kitten and Meow Kitten Rescue. They <laughs> rescued him and they um, uh, really made a very very good job of him. We thought he was going to be much smaller than our other cats, but it turns out he's actually quite massive. He's also really weird as well. He does a lot of really weird things, including fetching. And right now I'm going to see if we can interest him in fetching. Here we go. Here's a piece of scrap paper. Marvel. He's so weird. No. Well, that went really well. <laughs> that went really badly. He usually runs and gets the paper, but because it's live, that didn't happen. Anyway, let's go back to um, our lesson. I'm going to share my screen with you now, and we will get on with the presentation. Ah, oh, he's trying to drink my water now. No, <laughs> get off. All right, here we go. He's found the liver treats. Yeah. Okay. You should all be able to see my screen now. Hoping that you can. Today, we're going to go over yesterday's homework a little bit. Um, and the homework was make sure you've got your rules copied down and those rules were the Q rule, which you had to find more examples of, the C rule, which you had to find more examples of, and the G rule. And then there was some extra work and that was finding exceptions to those rules and figuring out extra, extra work, figuring out why those words were exceptions. What I'm going to do is take about 30 seconds and if you found any examples, and more, even more interestingly, if you found any exceptions, to the Q rule, the C rule, or the G rule, write them into your chat right now because I'm taking uh, examples of words that don't follow the rules as well as words that do follow the rules. So the Q rule was Q is always written with the letter U. There are some exceptions. If you've got any, write them in chat. What about the day? Oh yeah, we'll do the we will do the day in just one second. <laughs> I'm so glad I have a producer. Um, the C rule was when C comes before E, I or Y, it must say S. There are some exceptions to that rule. And the G rule, when G comes before E, I or Y, it may say J. It may. It doesn't have to. It may say J. All right. So we're going to quit share for a second while people put their words in chat, in chat, and I will talk to you about the day. Anyone who came last week knows what day, what the, uh, the day is named after today. It's Wednesday, and that comes from Odin. Odin was the chief of all the Norse gods. He was the big one, the All Father. His name became Woden in Old English. So Odin became Woden. Why they put a W on the beginning is lost in the mists of time. But that W then gave us wed -ness day because it was Woden's day. Over time, it became Wednesday, wed -ness day. To remember how to spell it, the best thing to do is to say it in three syllables, wed -ness and day, but it's Odin's day today, Wednesday. And that's an example of how language changes over time and how sometimes the pronunciation of words changes and sometimes the, the spelling of words change. And sometimes the pronunciation and the spelling change at different paces, at different rates. 
which is what can make English look a little bit difficult. But we'll go back to that in a sec. Now, I'm going to share my screen again with you. Um, there are some amazing examples here, absolutely fabulous examples of words that do follow the Q U, Q U rule and words that don't and words that follow the G rule. I'm looking through all of them. We are going to get to every single one. Keep typing them up, especially the exceptions, because I'm going to tell you a little bit about exceptions now. All right. Back to the presentation. Word stories. You see, we learned a bunch of rules yesterday, right? And the thing that happens when you teach people rules, the first thing that usually happens is that they go out into the world and they go, wait, that's a word that doesn't follow that rule. Maybe Lynn's not telling the truth, right? So what we have to do straight away, as soon as we come up with a rule, is we also have to look at the exceptions to that rule. And there is a story behind every single exception. <clears throat> They're called word stories, and that's what today's lesson is about. Word stories and broken rules. So if you look at this diagram here, and you can get a link to that diagram, um, I've already put it on my website, along with an article that explains more about what this, um, this entire thing is about, but I'll give you a very, very quick rundown. Our language over here, English, has lots and lots of um, influence, lots of other languages. It evolved from lots of other languages, just like the roots, the branches, and the leaves of a tree. So English came through all of these different journeys and was influenced by all of these different languages, which means the words that we have have been contributed to, our, our language has been contributed to by all of that. And over history, here we have this thing called Indo-European. That's not a language now. That's what people who've studied the history of language think might have been the original or one of the original languages before branching out into all of these different ones. We've got English here, German, Spanish, Hindi, Bengali, Punjabi, Persian. So we've got all of these languages. They branched off and branched out like that. And that, that diagram there shows you something of um, a concept of the history of how all these languages evolved and became separate from each other. And I know that we had a wonderful question the other day about how all of that happened. And it's a huge story, but this picture helps to show all the different branches and how they came about. But you can, you can look at that picture uh, on my website as well and look at the article that it came from. So that's just spoken language. After that, well, then came writing. So we started writing our language down not a very long time ago. 3,000 years, some people say up to 6,000 were the first times that people tried to create symbols that would um, communicate our spoken language. It, what I'm interested in, though, is around about the 1400s. And that's where uh, we started people started inventing ways of mass producing written language. This picture here I'm showing you is a very old printing press. It's called before the internet and before computers, we had to manually place all the letters of the alphabet onto these presses and run ink over them and run paper over them. So around about the late 1400s, um, this started to become a very popular thing. Also around about that time, formal schooling um, meant school, school started to grow as well. So children started to have education and people started to become educate, educated. So with the production of paper and the invention of the printing press, we started to be able to mass produce writing. And that created a problem because people just spelled however, however they wanted. I don't know if you've ever seen any old English texts but they're hardly, some of them are hardly readable because there was no agreed upon way to spell words. So people just did whatever they felt like. Now, the people that were selling books said, you know, we want to actually bring it all into line so that we 
can write a word and everybody who reads it knows what that word is because right now it's a real mishmash and that was a thing called standardization those people who did printing presses who you know used printing presses in their business said we're going to agree on ways to spell things and that's how it's going to be so that's and it took a very long time to standardize english spelling but now we have a standard english spelling and they follow certain rules however some words escaped some words escaped those rules some of our english words don't follow those rules and this is the story of those words there are seven main reasons why words don't follow the rules today we're going to look at four tomorrow we're going to look at the other three but today we're going to look at the four four main word stories why words don't follow the rules so here we go we've got this i've come up with this thing called the word stories wheel you can see it now and in the middle there is a statement and the statement reads this word is exceptional because and that means whatever word that we put in the word stories wheel we're going to tell its story and its story um, and the words that we're looking at are words that don't follow the rules so I'm going to stop sharing for a second and i'm going to write a word for you on the board we're ready here we go here is our first word that we're going to study with the word stories wheel today <laughs> do you know i think marvel really likes spelling i think he does all right so the first word is going to be spaghetti spaghetti who likes spaghetti i do now this word spaghetti ends with the letter i you don't have to learn to spell the word spaghetti it's quite a complicated word but it's a really common word and it has an i at the end and anybody who's done any lessons with me knows that i is an illegal letter it's a letter that you're not allowed to have at the end of an english word so how come that was allowed what's the story how come the word spaghetti ends with i does anybody know let's see some answers me says ozzy you're right ozzy you do know i love spaghetti too fantastic work all right yay maria good work everybody um it is taken from the Italian language. It's taken from Italian. It's a foreign word. So I'm going to share again because Marvel's in the way, but I was going to share anyway. The first word story, why words don't follow the rules, is that they are borrowed from other languages. Am I sharing, Babs? No. Why am I not sharing? There we go. All right. First reason is borrowed. Borrowed words don't follow the rules so if it's from another language it came into our language and ignored the standardization process do you see how that works all right i hope you do i'm sure you can think of lots and lots of other borrowed words and your homework is going to be finding more and this can go on and on you can keep doing this if you manage to get the um the pdf download beforehand next to that borrowed wheel um, sorry, that borrowed circle, you can start writing words coming off that wheel. Spaghetti, ski, menu. All of these words were borrowed from other languages. And you can go further into it. What language were they borrowed from and so on? It's a really good thing to do. All right, we're going to do the next one. I'm going to stop sharing, Bubs. Okay so here we go somebody came up with this and it's in our chat here somebody actually came up with this next word that doesn't follow the rule in fact it breaks the q u rule it is the word that is the name of a very famous australian airline what is the word that we're talking about 
Australia's national airline. Yay, very good. Some answers going into the chat there. It's Qantas. Look at that. Q A N T A S, Qantas. I don't like that whiteboard marker. I'm going to need a better one. Oh, that's much better. Okay, good stuff. Do you see this Q is not written with a U? Well, how come? Why is that? Yay, clever people. It's an acronym, an acronym. That's a posh word, isn't it? But basically it means a word that's made from the first letter of a whole bunch of words. Qantas stands for, you ready? Queensland and Northern Territory. There are two states in Australia. Queensland and Northern Territory Air Service. So we took all those words and we took the first letter of those words and we made a new word. That is an acronym. ac ro -nim. A new word made from the first letter of a bunch of words. So it doesn't, um, doesn't follow the rules. Acronyms don't follow the same rules. They're not part, they were never part of that standardization spelling process. All right, so we're gonna go back to our presentation. An acronym is the second reason that words are exceptional. Now, so that's your second wheel. Check this word out. I'm gonna write it on the board again for you. If you get into your car, well, not you, if your children don't get into your car and do this, but parents get into a car and you turn your engine on and then you put your foot on the accelerator and you make the engine go like this, like that. What are you doing to your engine? What's that called? What's that word? When you make it go round and round, you make the engine go round and round. Everybody got it? It's rev. I'm going to rev my engine. Now there is a rule that says you can't end a word with the letter V. Good, everyone got rev, well done. You can't end a word with the letter V and yet here's rev and we use rev all the time. He's going to rev his engine. Yep. So what's happening there? What, where did this word come from? Why doesn't it follow the rules? I'll show you. The word rev is actually short for the word revolution. A revolution is a complete turn of something. So engines in cars turn around. They have wheels and cogs <laughs> that turn. So every time you turn it once, it's a revolution. And it's been shortened to rev. The technical scientific name for a word that has been shortened is an abbreviation. Abbreviation, that is quite a big word and you don't have to write it down. But abbreviation is the term. Abbreviations they escaped from the standardization process because they were cut off. Rev. That's an abbreviation. There are lots of other abbreviations out there. So that is the third wheel in the word stories wheel. Borrowed acronyms, abbreviations, shortened. All right, next thing. Going to, um, going to write this one down. Now, I don't know if Edie is with us today, but Edie asked a really intelligent, she always asks really intelligent questions, but she asked a really intelligent question last week. And she said, I have a friend called Lucy and her name is spelt like this. spelt like that. How come? Because I is an illegal letter. It's a, the letter I shouldn't be at the end of English words. The printers didn't like that. It's such a skinny letter. 
it was such a skinny letter that it kept falling off the printing press. So they said, don't put I on the end of a line. And the only way they can stop it being on the end of the line is if they stop it being on the end of a word. So I became an illegal letter. And yet there's Lucy, like this. How come she gets to have an illegal letter at the end of her word, at the end of her name? Because it is a name. Here's the thing. If you make up the name of your child, and there's lots of amazing names out there, you can spell it any way you want. You don't have to follow the spelling rules. You don't have to follow the standardization process for spelling. You can spell anything. Hey, Maximilian, he is called Maxi. Look at that, because you can. With names, you're allowed to do whatever you want, because it's your name. It's your name. You see how that works? So that, that is the four that we are going to do today. Those are the four word stories. Just to go back over them again with you, we've got borrowed, like ski and menu, acronyms, like Qantas, abbreviations, cut short, like Rev, and names, like Lucy and Maxi. There's three more, and if you've printed out the sheet, you know what's coming. And they're coming tomorrow, so I hope you can join me. I am going to uh, take Easter off. So tomorrow is the last lesson until Tuesday. So I'm going to take off Good Friday and Easter Monday. Um, so if you come tomorrow, you can see the next three word stories, and then we'll come back together on Tuesday if that's all right. But now it is time for me to go through the chat and to have questions. So if you do have a question, usually about spelling, I know we get all sorts of wonderful questions. Um, we try to stick to spelling just because we've only got a little bit of time. But if you've got questions, put your hand up um, and uh, we'll unmute your mic and you can ask a question. Oh, and by the way, my pajamas today, they're Peter Alexander, of course, but they are, uh, they're about 10 years old. These are vintage. These are vintage Easter pajamas. These are my first ever Easter pajamas. I thought you might enjoy those. All right, we have some questions. So Thomas, you are up. Go for it. Um, I have um, the printed sheet um, here, um, and I don't know if you can see properly that it has the um, things in um, here. Is that, is that all right? I don't need to write anything in. Is that, say the last bit again? That I don't need to write anything in my book at the moment. Or, or, or... Oh, I'm glad you asked, actually, Thomas. You've actually um, raised a very, very important thing. I'm going to share my screen with you one more time, guys, because I forgot to show, show you the homework. Thank you for reminding me, Thomas. You're welcome. Um, so I will. Uh, show you this. Here's the homework coming up. There. So the first thing is download the blank word stories wheel. So that is on my website and the, um, you know, where you get the recordings and all the other stuff that you can find in the free webinars. It's at the same place. Free webinars, lifelongliteracy.com free webinars. Download the blank word stories wheel and print it out if you can, if you have access to a printer. Paste it into your book, your exercise book. Add today's words to it. Add more words when you find them. So today's words, I'm going to put them up there. Stop sharing. And today's words were, um, spaghetti, spag, het, E, the big one, big complicated word. And we had ski. And then we had Qantas. So these were borrowed. This one is an acronym. Then we had the abbreviation REF. Then we had the name Lucy. And we had the name Maxi. Ooh, squeaky. So what you do is you add them to the wheel and usually what I tend to do is if you've got like the borrowed circle there I just do a line and write the word so that there's lines coming out 
of all the wheels like this. And you might run out of space, which means you might have to print another one or even start a word list in your book, depending on how many you, um, you get. So I hope that's clear for everyone. I'm going to go to Elizabeth. Elizabeth um, or Elizabeth's device. What is your, um, your question? When were typewriters created? Oh, that's a brilliant question. And off the top of my head, I don't know. Can we set that as a project for you? Can you find out? You might want to um, Google that and come back to us. Are you wearing a Harry Potter scarf? That looks like a Harry Potter scarf. <laughs> that's very really beautiful. <laughs> that's excellent. And I think you might be wearing your gym jams too. Or am I wrong on that one? Wrong. Is it just, I'm wrong. <laughs> it says just me. All right, fair enough. But brilliant question. Can you come back to us with that answer? Yes. That would be really good. Thank you. Because typewriters are the precursor, the things that came before computers. Yes. Well, that keypad um, that, that we still have came from typewriters. Fabulous. All right. Ed. It's Edie's turn. Um, hello, I just wanted to say that me and my friend Lucy are listening in right now, so. Hi Lucy, wow, what an honour, you, you, you're famous. <laughs> you, you've been discussed many times in spelling and now we all know why your beautiful name is spelled in the lovely way that it is, so. Good work, brilliant stuff, thank you. Thank you Edie and Lucy. And Valma. Hi, Lynn. How you Hi, doing? Valma, all the way from South Africa. Yeah, and I'm lying here under my doona. So <laughs> I'm trying. <laughs> so I can't really put the, the light on because it will disturb the people in the room here. That's fine. What's your question, Valma? Um, uh, uh, foreign languages. For example, here in South Africa, we have like 13 different languages, and I find that um, the I at the end of a word tends to be spelled a lot, um, you know, with I E, for example. Right. Um, yeah. E is the the, the sort of the, the thing that solved that. Um, so if you stick E on the end, it stops the letter I from coming off the printing press. So it's a convention that's that's gone across to quite a lot of languages. Not Italian though. <laughs> the Italian didn't want so, that well. Yeah. So how do you you stop children from making that mistake? because they're hearing an I at the end or an E at the end and getting them to, to sort of learn that rule, I find is a bit difficult. Well, I think if you've got to, with, with any kind of lesson that you do, you've got to have the lead up to it and you've got to have the carry on bit. So once you've explained it, it's not like they're going to stop doing that just because you've explained it. Mm -hmm. Then you've got to practice. And, and, and that's why they've got to find words. They've got to look at the exceptions and you keep reminding them every time they make a mistake um, to um, to look at the lesson that's gone before and start to articulate and take on board why um, why that's not an accepted spelling. And that's the best we can do. Mm -hmm. Thank you very much. My pleasure. Bethany. No, no, no. Oh, hello, this is Mama. We, we watched your amazing video on the stunt double. So we often, take, Bethany works on the stunt double and his um, side kicks. So the stunt double, stunt double Y takes yep. over his side E and I. So that's worked for us. And also we, I like that. we learned about the R. You learned about the letter R? No, the bossy R. Oh, that makes vowels go a bit crazy. So whoever asked that question, she should watch your video on the stunt double and his sidekicks, E and I. E and I, did you say? Yeah, he had, you have on your website, on the yes. free resources, there's a video, and it, it says, why is the stunt double? That's right, yes. So he ends over from the E and the I. So just that lady, whoever asked, that was really good for us. Oh, thank you. That's very kind, very nice feedback. Thank you. <laughs> Brilliant work, and we're gonna we're gonna do our why again because I forgot to record it last time. So we'll re-record why. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> All right. Anybody else? Melissa. Uh, turn off your audio. 
Me, I'm making, I'm doing terrible things over here. Um, if I do that, I can't hear the question. Oh, turn it on. Okay. All right. So I'm just going to. So what's Hi. echoing? Hi. Um, the business names need to follow the rules. No names do. Business names, they just make stuff up. They do. Have you, have you, do you know one that doesn't follow the rules? Um, no, but I was just wondering. And so a lot of business names are acronyms as well. There you go. Thank you very much. Thank you. That was a great question. Thank you. Wonderful. Hmm. As soon as I turned that up, it went weird. Turn it down. All right, we've got Stacy. Stacy, go for it. Um, it's Thomas. Ah, oh, Thomas, great, fantastic. Go for it, Thomas. I, I see in brackets, Thomas. Right there, we why? go. The question. Why do um? Why was the wheel made how it was made? Like. How is there one in the middle and seven on the outside? That's a brilliant question. How is it like that? And it will be revealed tomorrow because the beginning letter of all of those stories actually makes a word. So I wanted to start at the top with B and then go A, A, N, and then the other ones make a word as well, which I will reveal tomorrow. And okay. the bit in the middle is the statement this word is exceptional because that's a really good question thomas you're a star thank you <laughs> do we have any i hope that answers your question you've got to watch tomorrow to get the full answer <laughs> all right one more and it is the nichols family could be anyone could be jack could be sophie could be amy who knows uh what are all the illegal letters well that's a good question we're going to do the illegal letters lesson next week. But just so you know, so you can start practicing, it goes like this. I, J, Q, U, V, at the end of a word they cannot be. Thank you. You're welcome. Do we have any more questions? Thomas, is um, video still on? Oh, sorry. Um, all right. Any more questions from anyone? I'm going to look down the chat just to make sure. Um, but -um -bum -bum. there's a Lucy here that's actually spelt with a Y as well because you can you can totally um, you can spell names that however you want taxi breaks the rules yes it does it's short for taxi cab so that would be an abbreviation well done that's a great absolutely great um, oh that was Matilda wasn't Sophie or Jack sorry Matilda um, yes, that was a great question. And I, J, Q, U, V at the end of a word they cannot be, but we'll do that next week. Big. Um, the rules we learned yesterday, does that apply if the letter is within the word or only at the start? Uh, it can be anywhere in the word. So the C and G rules can be affected by E, I or Y wherever they are in the word. Brilliant question. Gee whiz, you guys are smart. That was really good. Yes, menu is one of the um, menu is one of the exceptions. You're right. Julia has asked where where can we find more words as homework? Good question, Julia. There's a lot of words out there. Do you know what my my suggestion always is for finding more exceptions to rules? Is looking in the books that you're reading. Hopefully, you've all got something that you enjoy reading. And looking in those books, you become conscious of words that aren't following the rules. There are, they're everywhere, but they all have a story. So it's a good place to look in your books, first of all. Secondly, though, I'm sure if you Googled <laughs> words that break the spelling rules, <laughs> there'll be a whole bunch of lists coming up there. So there's a project for you as well, Julia. Um, all right, now, yes, so we've got some questions there. QWERTY. Oh, that's a good one, Annabelle. The typewriter, the QWERTY keyboard. The Q is not written with a U in QWERTY because it's an acronym. That's right. Q, Q, W, E, R, T, Y, QWERTY. Wow, that's a brilliant example. That's a brilliant example. Um, now, Isla has a question. And uh, on chat, 
Um, do you want me to unmute you, Isla? It's Melissa Hoare, if you could find that. You can find the homework on my website, Julia. Um, and EY is one, EY is a business name, yep. Kmart has a made up business no, name. That's right, K and Mart. K and M don't usually go together in English. It's a made up name. Very good, Winnie, yeah. like Winnie the Pooh, absolutely. Does gecko not follow the rule because it is the name of an animal? The thing is, I don't see gecko breaking the rule. You can, with E, well, sorry, with G, it may say J, it doesn't have to. So if there's an E after the G in gecko and it says G, it's still being completely, still playing fair. Hope that answers your question, Ella. Um, all names are okay, Winnie the Pooh. Uh, I think that might be it. Thank you very much. Yes, thank you very much, everybody. Oh my gosh, we've gone a bit over time, which I don't mind. It's always nice to speak to you. But guess what? It's time. It is time for us to unmute and say goodbye. I can hear everything in the world. Bye. Bye, everyone. Happy Easter. Put the cameras on and wave goodbye if you would like to. <laughs> Bye. Bye. I'll see you tomorrow, hopefully. Bye. 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 Bye.